Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello and welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Today's episode, we are talking about what your pet's poop is telling you. So if you are just listening to the podcast, that's great. That's wonderful. We are going to be detailed (laughs) today. So you're going to get plenty of information. I will tell you the video will go live tomorrow, the day after the podcast airs and, uh, on rumble and YouTube. And I will have a chart in that video for you to see as well. But again, we're going to go into detail. So no worries. Uh, all of the information will be here. You're going to be able to visualize and I'm sorry if you don't want to, but it's actually really, really important. Um, I know I have said this probably many times before one of the most important things we can do to make sure we are staying on top of our pet's health is keeping up with their poop. Um, now dogs generally are better at telling us when something is wrong. Cats are not. So I am like, I'm a very, very big proponent of staying on top of your cat's litter box habits in general, um, both urine and defecation. But from here on out, it's just, it's just me and you, I'm just going to say pee and poop. Okay. Um, (laughs) so, uh, that's one of the reasons why I do not love litter robots, um, because you, you don't know what's going on with your cat, what's going, what's coming out of your cat. It's so important. Um, also very, very important for our dogs. So the size, the shape, the color, the smell of your pet's poop can tell you a lot about their overall health. For a dog, a healthy poop should be a chocolate brown color, uh, log shaped, solid, but not dry. And when I say a chocolate brown color, it's the chocolate we all think of milk chocolate, right? It should also be the appropriate volume for the food you feed your dog. Now I know it, this is so true in my experience. And so many other people have said the same thing that, uh, when you feed your pet, a biologically appropriate you know, very, very bioavailable species appropriate raw food diet. Uh, what comes out of your pet is, is minimal because they are getting so much nutrition from the food they're eating. There's not a whole lot of waste. So the amount, the volume is also, it's important. So we want to, we want to stay on top of these things for your cat. Healthy poop is generally a dark Brown firm, but not hard and shaped like logs. So there are some, there's some scoring charts basically, uh, on which we will go through, but let's talk about a lot of the different charts we have. There's a, a, a dog fecal scoring chart and a cat fecal scoring chart and every pet is an individual. So what's normal varies depending on your pet's diet, their age, um, other factors, including, uh, their, their health, what they've been through in their lives. If they've recently been on antibiotics, for example, it's going to change their poop more than likely. Um, but once you get in the habit of understanding and paying attention to what's going on, you'll really notice any changes and you'll be like, Oh, I wonder if that's okay. Or if that's not okay. So let's talk about scoring <laughs> your cat and dog's poop. So for your cat, um, and for your dog, a score of one, which is the most firm your pet's poop can be. And, and I'm going by some charts that I agree with. So I've looked and I've looked these, I really, really closely agree with. These are from animal biome. So these people are all about <laughs> your dog and cat's poop because it is literally what they do. Um, So I I feel like theirs is their charts are the best. So this is what we're going with the cat fecal scoring chart. Let's start with cats and then we'll move on to dogs score of one. 
is very hard, very, very dry. It can require a lot of effort for your cat to expel this from their body. Um, they may be straining a lot because it's very hard and very dry. This is not good. Um, a score of two is firm, but not hard segmented in appearance better, not perfect. Three, a score of three is log shaped little or no visible segmentation and it's moist to the surface. So three is pretty darn good. So somewhere between a two and a three is going to be ideal closer to three, right? Closer to three is where we want to be. Now from here, we go to a score of four, which is moist, soggy, um, loses form when you try to pick it up or scoop it out of the box. A score of five is very moist, but still has distinctive shape. And it presents as a pile rather than distinct logs. A score of six has texture, but no defined shape also presents as piles, possibly even spots inside of the litter box. And then a score of seven is watery. There's no texture at all. And you just got to have flat puddles. So as you can see, we just ran the gamut of uh, texture basically of poop. Again, we, the ideal consistency is that log shaped, slightly moist surface. Um, but you know, it's not super hard when you, because you know, when you pick up dog poop, you know what it feels like. Um, and when you are sifting in a litter box, if it's really, really runny, that's, that's not good either. Or if it's super, super hard. Now your, your dog or cat may be constipated. The dog fecal scoring chart is almost identical. Um, but the pictures are slightly different because dog poop and cat poop look different. So both of these charts will be in the video. If you're watching the video, here they are. Um, and we'll go through them. We'll look at them because they are really, really important. It's really important to know what is coming out of your cat and what is coming out of your dog. So two and three scores of two and three, again, are considered normal, ideally closer to three. So let's talk about those again. The score of two is firm, but not hard segmented in appearance. And then a score of three is log shaped little or no visible segmentation and moist to the surface. So if it's too segmented to me, that means that it's, it's more difficult for your pet to get it out. And then we are getting into the like little pieces that are very hard and very dry. We don't want that. That's again, a score of one. Now you can go through score, you know, from score one to score seven, and, and you probably know where your dog normally lies or where your cat normally lies. Um, now a score of one, again, that really hard poop that's like pieces. It's, it's not even like a long segmented log it's pieces. Generally we're, we're thinking that it's very difficult to get that out and your dog or cat could be constipated that generally is caused not always, but from a pet, not having an appropriate diet possibly because they're not drinking enough water. Um, maybe they're having reduced motility through their colon. So there's, there's a lot that could be going on there again, two and three, we're looking for that slightly moist on the outside, possibly slightly segmented, but that log shape, right? Not hard. That's normal scores of four and five are getting a little too soft. Generally, we're going to think, okay, maybe our pet doesn't have enough fiber in their diet. So if this is the norm for your dog or your cat, where it is a little bit too soft, we, do, we can look at some fiber supplements. We can look at adjusting the diet a little bit. If it came on sudden, like your, your pet's poop is generally normal in that normal range, but suddenly, um, it's a little too soft, then chances are it's probably diet related, something they recently ate that isn't agreeing with them. So, um, maybe if you changed or tried something new, uh, or maybe even the formulation of what you've been buying changed, we've, we've talked about that in the past uh, that happens. And a lot of times the company doesn't notify people. <laughs> um, so 
that could be what is going on there. Now, scores of six and seven, where it is way too soft, way too wet. It's just like, there's no shape whatsoever. That's classified as diarrhea. It means your pet's food isn't being properly digested often because the material is passing too quickly through the GI tract. So diarrhea can be very difficult, um, especially with a young kitten or puppy or an older dog or cat, because, uh, they are more at risk for dehydration. I mean, especially, especially young kittens and puppies. They are very high, like high, high, high at risk for dehydration. So any sign of diarrhea, we want to immediately um, consult with our veterinarian and get them back on track. And then again, with, you know, elderly pets, we want to be very uh, conscientious about their health and, and diarrhea is never, never good in any animal, but generally the, you know, healthy adult range, we can, they can pop back a little quicker from it but it's still a sign that something is not right. And we do want to adjust a little bit what we're doing. We want to, um, make it as easy as possible for our digestive system to rest and relax and get, get back in tip top shape. So a bland diet, um, I know I've done videos on this in the past. So generally we're talking about, um, ground Turkey cooked ground Turkey and either adding in a little bit of pumpkin or a little bit of cooked sweet potato, cooked pumpkin, cooked sweet potato. Uh, to add in some fiber. So those are going to be, that's going to be the best bland diet for either your dog or your cat to help them, you know, hopefully just in a day or two, um, maybe two to three at the very, very most get over that little bout of diarrhea. If it's something that came on suddenly, again, if this is the norm for your animal, that's not good. We need to be consulting with our veterinarian. Um, now, I am in no way affiliated <laughs> with Animal Biome, but I do highly recommend them. So if you listen to this podcast and you're like, I know that my dog or my cat is in that not good range and has been for a very long time. Um, we haven't been able to figure it out. We haven't been able to rectify it. Um, even my vet doesn't, we're like, we're just kind of dealing (laughs) as best we can highly, highly recommend checking out animal biome. Again, I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever. Uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. Of course, you can always consult through telehealth if you don't have a holistic veterinarian in your area, because I know they're, they're hard to find. They are few and far between. Um, a lot of them do telehealth. So I would recommend that for you as well. Um, yeah, so that's kind of it in a nutshell with a, a pretty good overview of how to figure out what is going on with your pet's health based on their poop, because it's telling you a lot, right? Like there is a lot to be, to be found in what's coming out of your pet, um, with, with their urine too, but I didn't want to overload today's episode. So with that, oh, I, I will throw in really quick before I let you out of today's episode. Um, if you are noticing blood in your dog or cat's urine or feces. We absolutely 100% want to call the vet right now and get them in. That's, that's really bad. So we don't want, hopefully it's not too bad. Hopefully it's not horrible, but it's not good. We don't want to leave that. Um, we don't want to leave that to chance. We don't want to think, oh, it's going to clear up. It might not. Um, this right now is your, your pet pet's body saying, help and <laughs> get to the vet right away. I need, I need medical help. So I will go ahead and end, end on that note. Um, I hope that this episode was helpful. Let me know by reaching out to me on all the socials. You can find me the pet parenting reset, um, on Facebook, on YouTube, on rumble and on Instagram is Jessica Lynn Fisher, but you can go to the pet parenting reset.com to get all of these links also to get a link to Patreon. If you are not part of the Patreon community, I hope to see you there. You can join for as little as a dollar a month and you get new content, exclusive content behind the scenes, loads of content for you on Patreon. And when you join for as little as a dollar a month, you get all of the back content as well. So lots and lots of great stuff there that I, I don't, post about anywhere else. So 
with that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, if you're not already following the podcast, if you just clicked on today's episode to give it a listen and, and feel it out, I hope you go ahead and give us a follow. And once you listen to a couple of episodes, I hope you give us a review as well. If you uh, want to reach out to me again, the petparentingreset.com, the best way to do that, if you have any comments or questions and until next week's episode, bye guys. Oh, oh, oh.